We can rise to the occasion. We can build this nation moving forward. All that we need, visionary leadership, people who love their people, people who love the citizens, people who love the country, and then we can rise. We can fly again. Hope Restoration Ministries, restoring hope to our world. Welcome to our broadcast. Enjoy. Happy, happy, happy New Year, Bandovengosi. It's so good to see you uh, this morning. I'm so grateful to the Lord that you have seen this New Year. Thank you for joining us this morning. Please give us those hearts as we celebrate a new year and tell us where you are joining us from because we are so excited this morning to do this together. You know, Hope Restoration, Kempton Park, you know, I can see you. Thank you for joining us. Welcome this morning. Midrand, Tembisa, I see you and I welcome you. Rodiport Springs, I know you are here. You are also welcome. Ebony Tswane Tobela, you are most welcome this morning. Thank you, thank you for joining us. I pray and hope you have enjoyed your Christmas and you have enjoyed your new year coming into this new year. It is that time of the year where we make resolutions. You know, resolutions to start all over again. Promising ourselves to stop smoking or drinking, to be a better spouse, to be a better parent or a better child, committing to pay off our debts and managing our finances very well. Many of us are so positive to further our studies, to upgrade our lives so that we can have a better life in this year. Some will even sign up, you know, for gym to lose weight. But year in and year out, Bandobengosi, we suffer many setbacks and failures. Moral failure, relational failure, emotional brokenness, academic failure, financial mismanagement, business bankruptcy, body weight maintenance, you know, the, uh, the list goes on and on. We find ourselves uh, struggling with these things that I have mentioned. You know, we can all agree, you know, as God's people, that resolutions, you know, to change our lives for better does not work. Those resolutions that we make every year to change our lives for better does not work. And I have come to this conclusion that we don't need resolutions, but we need, Bantabian Kosi, revolution, revolution to completely transform our lives. That is why this morning I want to talk to you under this topic, revolution, you know, chiga isimo, revolution chiga isimo. Simply put, be radical to change your circumstances. Be radical to change your circumstances. When you look at that word revolution, it simply means, you know, radical change of mind, behavior, or action. Radical change of mind, behavior, or action. I strongly believe if we are going to change our lives, if we are going to change Isimo, influence to we need a radical change. We need a revolution. You know, when you look at that word revolution, once again, it also means a single complete turn, not a half turn, you know, not a twice turn, but a single complete turn. You know, when you look at that word, once again, politically, the word revolution simply means an overthrow of a government system with another taking its place. You know, if you are overthrowing a system, you need to bring another new system, you know, to replace that was existing. You don't renovate, you don't bring renewal into that system, but you bring a new thing all 
together. You revolutionize the system. You bring it together. You bring a new thing all together. And spiritual, the word revolution also means to pull down, to uproot spiritual forces or to uproot spiritual powers. That is why when you read in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, for our struggle, it is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this world's darkness and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Now you'd realize that revolution, it's not going to be easy. For your circumstances and for your life to change, it's not going to be easy because there are forces that are challenging you. There are forces that are after your life. There are spirits, authorities that are after your life. That is why for your life to change, you need a serious revolution. You need to change in the name of Jesus. It's not going to be easy. The devil is not just going to look at you in 2023 and say, here is Solomon, here is Zotwa. He wants to change his life. It's going to be a battle, my dear. It's going to be a fight, my brother. It's going to be a war, my father. That is why somebody put it in this way. He said, you cannot make a revolution with white gloves. You can not make a radical change in your life with white gloves. You cannot be kind with this thing. You cannot just be soft about transforming your life, about changing your life. You need a radical change. You need a revolution, not just a resolution. How many resolutions have you made over the years? How many times have you promised yourself, how many times you have made those resolutions, but you are still in the same place. You are still facing the same demon. You are still facing the same habits. You have no change because you have been making resolutions. The times of making resolutions are over. It is time to make a revolution in your life. John Maxwell said these words one day. He said the difference between where we are and where we want to be is created by the changes we are willing to make in our lives. What changes are you willing to make in your life? What changes, what revolution are you willing to change? What things are you prepared to sacrifice so that you can have a better life? A better life, Mandabin Gossi, it will never be given into a silver platter. A changed life cannot just happen automatically. It's going to be a battle. It's going to be a commitment. It's going to need you to do something that you have never done before. I love the book of Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 24 to verse 28. It talks about the heroes of faith. People who have made a mark. People who have made a difference. People who have painted history, you know, in a different color. And you'd realize that there are things that they've made for them that we can even speak about them today. That is how you do it. Read with me in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 24, from verse 24, and we're going to look at the life of Moses. The Bible says, by faith, Moses, when he had grown up, he refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. It says he chose to be ill-treated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy, you know, the pleasures of sin. Verse 26 says he regarded, you know, disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt. You know, because he was looking ahead to his reward. And by faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. Verse 28, it says, by faith, he kept the Passover and the application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn 
of Israel. May the Lord bless the reading of his word this morning. May the Lord bless it in Jesus' name. So the big question, Bandabian goes is, how do I bring revolution in my life? How do I change, you know, isimo ganjani, isimo empilweniami? Because for you to have a better year, you need to change your circumstances. You need to have a revolution in your life so that you can have a better life. And how do I do that, you know, to make sure that my life becomes a better life? I'm glad you have asked that question. I've got seven points to give unto you and we're going to pray together and believe God that this year is going to be a great year forever. Number one, how do you bring revolution in your life? Number one, refuse what you are not. Refuse what you are not. Listen to me, child of God. Revolution in our lives begins with a big no. That is how you make things happen in your life. It begins with a big no. Saying no to what the world offers unto you. You see, it is a fact that while we are living in this world, the world is going to offer us things. The world is going to throw things at us. It's going to bring temptation. It's going to bring offers unto us. The Bible says in verse 24, by faith when Moses became of age, you know, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. You know, he was offered some privileges. He was offered, you know, a position in the palace. He was offered to live in this kingdom and listen to me, child of God. But the Bible tells us that when he became of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Let me tell you, he was not just refusing, you know, the surname. He was refusing the position. He was refusing the royalty life. He was refusing all the benefits, you know, of the kingdom. But because he knew who he was, that is why he was able to refuse, you know, what was offered unto him. Please write this statement down because it is very profound. You will never refuse what you are. You are not until you know who you are. Did you hear what I said? I said you will never refuse what you are not until you know who you are. Most of us, we are being, you know, offered things, but because we don't know who we are, we take everything so that we can become something that we are not. At the end of the day, even if we have taken those things, we are still not satisfied, we are still not happy, we are still not content because we have taken an identity that does not belong to God, but that belongs to the world. Listen to me, child of God. You need to learn to say no. Most of us, we are in a serious problem today. Today, we don't have a better life because we are not able to say no to what the world is offering unto us. Moses was very bold to say no. He refused, you know, when there was, there was an offer on the table. How many of us can say no when there's an offer in the table? Number two, how to bring revolution in your life. Listen to me, you know, give up privileges for significance. Give up privileges for significance. When you look at that word privilege, a privilege is a right or advantage gained by birth or adoption. These are the things that are given to you, you know, by birth or by adoption. Here is Moses. He was in the palace, you know, by adoption. And he had these advantages. He had these resources, this wonderful life. But listen to me, but because he wanted to have a better life. He wanted, you know, to have a revolution in his life. Listen to me, child of God. You know what he did? He had to give up that privilege, you know, for significance. And what is significance? Significance is to live for, for a cause that will last beyond death. I love that. You know, you give a privilege, something of today, for something that will live beyond even when you are no more. That is what I'm talking about. In verse 24 and verse 25, it says, you know, when he became of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasure of sin. Can you see what he's doing? Here is this man with all the benefits, with all the privileges, but he is choosing to suffer with the people of God. He is choosing, you know, significance to say, I'll rather go into the side of God. Listen to me, child of God. You know, if you are going to revolutionize your life, 
if you are going to revolutionize your life, you know, you need to give up immediate gratification for future, you know, or permanent impact. That is very important in your life. Give up immediate gratification for future or permanent impact. That is how you're going to bring transformation. That is how you're going to bring a radical change in your life when you are able to give up immediate gratification, you know, for future permanent. Above by tanda isn't as nandi abantabagiti. Ebum nandini gula pung tola kona gula sikitimela kona gula sifunu guba kona and then we end up enjoying life but lose, you know, a long and a permanent impact in our life. Number three, you know, how do you bring revolution in your life? Ushincha kanjani, isimo, empilwe niyako, bamba mtagaba, bamba bamba. Make unpopular choices or decisions. Make unpopular choices or decisions. Listen to this. Don't base your decisions on the advice of those who don't have to deal with the results or consequences. Did you hear what I said? I'm saying to you, don't base your decisions on the advice of those who don't have to deal with the results or consequences. We are very good at that. Most of the time we take decisions because we want to please so and so. But when you face the results or the consequences, those people are no longer there. Those people are far away from you because you are not even able, you know, and then to show them the results. They don't even care the results or the consequences. You'll be alone to face, you know, the music. And the Bible says here, Moses chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. And the Bible continues to say in verse 27, you know, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. You see, he was not even scared of the king. He loved Egypt. He loved the benefits. He, he took this unpopular decision. Can you imagine what was happening among his friends? His friends were saying, how can you leave this position? How I wish, you know, I was you, Moses. How I wish I had what you have so that I can enjoy, you know, this life. People were mocking at him. Friends were laughing at him. You know, circumstances were not that good at him. You know, probably the devil was laughing at him and saying, you know, you are a fool. Look at you. Look at what you have done. Let me tell you, child of God, if you want your life to take a different turn, if you want your life to take a radical change, you want a better life, there are some decisions that you need to take and those decisions are not popular. Those decisions are going to disappoint other people. You need to be able to say to a man who has been wasting uh, your life, your boyfriend, he does not take you anywhere. You can tell you have been with this person for years. Go to Aguna my results, Aguna Impumela. But here you are, you are with these friends, your life has never changed. You know, here comes a time in your life where you need to say, before it, it has been so beautiful, it has been so nice to be together. You know, bye-bye. You know, I, I am out of this relationship. I am out of this thing, you know, because I want to start all over again. Listen to me, child of God. I've done that many years ago. I took this unpopular decision when I was among my friends. I said, Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. My friends were saying, hey, Ntang, I ain't to inside. And I said, this is the life that I am taking. And I am so glad that today I'm standing in front of you and I can preach this message because I took a decision many, many years ago. Listen to me, child of God. Here is a statement that I want you to remember. We are what we are today because of the choices we have made yesterday. And we shall be what we shall be tomorrow because of the choices we are making today. Let me tell you, if you are not happy of who you are today, you need to remember it is because of the choices you have made yesterday. Yesterday. And if you are ne not happy with who you are today, make right choices and not just right choices, make unpopular choices, choices that will even offend 
other people if they are offended so that you can have a better life. So shall it be because it is not about them after all. You're going to present yourself before the throne alone, not with your friends, not with anybody next to you, but you alone. All of us, we're going to give an account. That is why I am challenging you and encouraging you. Take a revolutional, you know, stance this year. I'm sick and tired. Enough. It is enough of playing games. I just want to live life according to the plan of God and see what God will do with your life. Take that unpopular decision in the name of Jesus. May the good God and the spirit of God help you as you do that. Number four, number four, as you bring revolution in your life. Ushinja Isimo, Empilweniako, Bamba, Bamba, give up popularity for posterity. Give up popularity for posterity. You know, when you look at that word posterity, it simply means future generations or legacy or generational impact. Posterity is a generational impact. You are speaking about legacy, a generational legacy. You know, most of the time people, they just love to be popular for today. They just love to be celebrated today. You know, wherever you go, you are so popular, you are, you are, you are known all over, but you lose the impact for the next generation. You know what I love with, with Moses in verse 26? It says, Moses esteeming or valuing the reproach of Christ of, of greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. And he looked to the reward. You see, you need to come to a point where you value these things. You put these things in the scale and you are able to say, mm -mm, I have measured these things. I have scaled these things. But God is still the best in my life. Future generation, it is still the best. I would rather lose popularity for the sake of me having a legacy for myself and my children. That is what I am talking about this morning. May the good God do you good, you know, as you, you, you value yourself, as you value these things, you know, as you look towards the, the, the reward. Because where are we going to get our crowns? He himself, he will say unto us, well, well done, faithful servant. Well done, Matebula. Well done, Matenjo. Well done, all of us, Kosi. Well done for all that you have done. Lalilan Bandabangosi, Masina Lash and Teleni, Masina Katali and Teleni. But the truth is, for us to have a legacy, for us to have a generational impact, you need to allow God to give you a radical transformation, a radical revolution. In your life, you cannot bring a revolution in your community if we're Nangogwako, you have never experienced a revolution. Number five, I am about to finish. Number five, walk in discernment, not human understanding. Walk in discernment, not human understanding. I love when you vis read verse 26, it says, esteeming the reproach of Christ. You know, that of greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. You see, for me, you need to have that capacity where you are able to discern which are the things that are right and which are the things that are not right. Which are those that are godly and which are those that are not godly. When you look at the word discernment, it simply means the ability to judge well. The ability to judge well or to have a sense of how things look like, you know, or, or how things look in God's eyes. You see, how things look in God's eyes, not in men's eyes. Discernment simply says, this is how things look in the eyes of God. If you are not able to look at things and have that judgment to say, this is how God perceives things, and this is how people perceive things, you are doomed in your life. Because as a human being created by God, you must be in the position where you have an ability to judge well. You must be able to see things with the eyes of God. And when you take decisions based on that, your life will be transformed for the better. Most of the time we find ourselves in a mess because we don't view life with the eyes of God. The last two. Here is the most important thing. If you want to experience a revolution in your life, you must learn to endure 
in the midst of difficult circumstances. Endure in the midst of difficult circumstances. The Bible says, by faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. You see, the problem of this generation, we are used to microwave system. I want it now. I am not prepared to wait. If I can't get it, I will take it by force. That is the generation of our time. We don't know what is it to persevere. We don't know what is it to wait. We are always driving on the fast lane. No wonder so many accidents. No, ma no wonder so many deaths on our roads. You know, so many premature deaths in the lives of our young people. We don't want to work, but we want the riches. We don't want to go to school, but we want a better life. You know, we want to be rich, you know, and then we take shortcuts. That is why there is so much corruption in this country because you've got many people who just want a wonderful life, but they don't want to go through the proper channels. They have discovered that for you to get rich quicker, go into the political world because you can steal, steal the tax money and, and, and become rich overnight. That is the problem. Endurance is no longer our language. Look at the divorce in our country. Look at the divorce in the world. People, they don't longer exercise perseverance. Today, they get married. Three months later, Abba Safunan. Today is a, it's a celebration, spending thousands and thousands, you know, of money in the wedding. In three months down the line, Abba Safunan. Because we don't persevere. We don't take time. We don't, you know, relax and allow things to go through the process. The Bible says he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Do you want your life to change? Radical, celebrate those who are doing well. Celebrate those who are successful. But walk your journey. Take time while you reach your goals and you will see that God will transform your life. I love the last point. The last point says, exercise your faith. When you read that verse, you know, the whole chapter actually, it says by faith. Abraham did that. By faith, Sarah. By faith, that and there. You know, even in this verse, it says by faith, Moses. You know, listen to me. Don't just claim that you are a Christian. It is time for you to exercise your faith. Put your faith into practice. Many Christians, we love to say, I'm a child of God. I am a born again Christian. But can you put your faith into practice? The Bible says by faith, Moses did that. By faith, Moses made this decision. It is time, Dagama. Make these choices. Make this radical change in your life by faith. And believe in God. And say, I may not know what's going to happen. I may not understand what's going to happen. But I'm taking this step by faith. And I know that God will see me through. Just before I pray with you, it is a fact that you need a revolution. And here are the signs that it is time for change. It is time for a radical change. It is time for Isimo Sako Ugubasi Shinche. Here are the signs. When you are living in the past and you are resisting the new, it is time for you to change. When you constantly feel the need to escape your current situation, here you are, you feel like escaping your current situation. Don't run away from your situation, but change. Exercise change in your life. When you constantly live in regret, here you are, year in and year out, month in, month out, you always feel, you know, these regrets. Don't just keep on regretting. Exercise change. Allow change 
to come into your life. When you constantly blame others for your failures, do you know those people? Every year they blame other people. It is because of so and so. It's not going to help to blame other people. It is time for you to make sure that you bring a radical change in your life. Make a revolution, not just a resolution in your life. Listen to me. When you live to please others, if you're still living to please others, you need change. When your career is not aligned with your values, you need change. And not only that, when you keep thinking, there has to be something more than this. Yes, there has to be something more than this. It is a sign, Mtagama, that you need change. When your health is declining, you need change. You can't keep on living like that. You can't keep on working so hard over, you know, over time all the time and you are compromising your health. Your health is not changing. That simply means your health is declining. That simply means you need a change in your life. And finally, when your life has become a script you no longer want to follow. Here is the script of your life, but you don't want to follow that. And you are not happy with the script of your life. It is time for change. Time for revolution. Change your circumstances. It is you who can change it by taking your life and give it to Christ Jesus and say, Father God, as I begin this year, I need you. I cannot do this on my own. And I promise you, with God on your side, all things are possible. I want to pray with you at home. I want to pray with you. You are there. I may not see you, but God sees you. At the comfort of your home, you are saying, Pastor Matebula, I've been making resolutions, but I need a revolution. I need a radical change in my life. Would you please pray with me? I will definitely pray with you. If you are that person, just raise your right hand. Pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you today. Lord Jesus, come to my heart. Be a Lord and the Savior of my life. Deva, from today, you will never, ever rule my life. My life belongs to Jesus, Jesus alone. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. I strongly believe that if you have prayed that prayer, change has come into your life. Make sure you commit unto God this time. Commit unto God. Make sure you put him first in your life. And I tell you, your life will never be the same. Just before I allow you to go, I just want to speak a blessing to everybody. I want to speak a declaration as we begin the year. I pray and I decree that the favor of God will be upon you. You are favored coming in. You are favored going out. You are blessed coming in. You are blessed going out. You are blessed in the city. You are blessed outside the city. You will never be on the tail this year, but you will be on the leading. You will be on top. With God, all things are possible. I declare no weapon formed against you shall prosper. This year is going to be the best year ever in your life. May the good God open doors for you. May the good God fight your enemies. May the good God fight the battles for you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the strength, the supernatural strength over your life like never before. No more stagnation in your life. In the name of Jesus, Progress is coming your way. Doors are open over your life. In the name of Jesus. Baba, Your finances will be restored. Your businesses will be restored. In the name of Jesus, the name that is above all other names. Amen and amen. If you receive it, come on, give God praise wherever you are. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Happy 
happy, happy, happy new year. I will see you next Sunday, you know, and then physical this time and we'll be praying and speaking the grace of God. Umdagamatebula uti enjoya usugulwako and have a wonderful time. Amen and amen.